Welcome back, everybody, to the Bremen Regional Championships 2022, where we are here for the second of the top four matches, Giulio Dallo versus Maurice Uteg. And I'm, of course, joined by Costa Dynamos. How are you doing, man? I am doing okay. I'm still trying to calm down the tempo a bit because uh, my heart palpitations are going through the roof. I watched that too, Lex. Oh, oh my lord. It's it, a match. It was a great, great semi-final, and it was a great example of uh, trying to go for your win con and trying to like do the best that you can to think about that end game and the general over overall uh, board state. And um, I think both trainers, uh, there were quite a few RNG involvements, um, I think, uh, but I think you just got to try to adapt to them, take advantage, and force your way through. And I think that that's what uh, Giovanni was able to do exceptionally well, even though Eric, commiserations to Eric, of course, uh, congratulations to Giulio. Um, he put up a very good fight and Giulio is just going to try to ride that train of form right now straight into the finals. So he's the final boss. Let's see who's going to join him. Let's do it indeed. So here he is on the left, Giulio Tallo of Italy with his achievements, the Lille's regional finalist from last week, the 2022 EU International Top 64, the Players' Cup 3 EU Top 16, and the Players' Cup 2 EU Top 16 as well. So, so many recent accolades there to really show off. And he's so consistent too, running the same team as last week, and he's doing really well, wants to get to the final last time, and then obviously take that win. And yep. he's he's a really strong player. Like he knows exactly what he's doing. So we're gonna go sh soon over to Maurice Uteg as well, who is who has recently got his world's invite as well with some awesome achievements as well. No, definitely. Uh... Awesome achievements, of course. Uh, more on the online sort of uh, play, at least before going to Frankfurt, where they were able to achieve that uh, top 64 in the European Internationals Champions uh, Championship. So great stuff from Maurice as well. I think uh, from what I can recollect, Maurice is also bringing the archetype of Swordfish. And Julio is the only, well, was at least, of the top four competitors to bring that Lunadon, that variance in the restricted choices. So um, just giving you the heads up up we do have the voting available just beneath us here so please go into the chat of uh, who you want to support who you think is going to go ahead and get that final spot in uh, up against giovanni and try to go ahead and be crowned champion because uh right now i think julio has a bit more experience when it comes to on uh, in live events but maurice is definitely nothing to um nothing to kind of undermine in this scenario because they've done exceptionally well and they have guided the team to this point where they just want to go ahead and clinch that victory. Indeed, Costa. So these two players have obviously gone up against very similar teams over the course of the Swiss series yep. as well. Um, there's been a few Lunadons hanging around. There's been lots of Kyogre Zashian. So I think this is definitely a match of both these players have faced yes. in practice and in the tournament too. So they've probably already got a game plan going into this. They've also had a little bit of a break whilst we've been streaming the previous top four to kind of really think about their matchup directly with for the other opponent too. And I'm sure they've probably done their homework as well from last night, having a look at the stream because both of them, uh, like at least Maurice was on it as well, see what sort of things that they can glean from each other's teams um, and go into this with maybe a little bit more idea of even speed tiers between their Pokemon, particularly those Incineroars maybe, which um, we've seen a lot of speed tie over the course of a few days. Oh yeah, it's been speed tie galore, to be honest, and uh, that really does change up the matchup and the kind of um, uh, general board state flow, uh, especially when you have like parting shots or throat chops involved as well, right? Um, where they kind of um, hinder any sort of um, sound-based moves such as like snarl or, or parting shots. So it is quite important, but of course, we do have team preview available to us. And going into this matchup then, uh, David, you mentioned that both of these trainers will have been well-versed with uh, dealing with the opposing archetype, at least definitely from Julio's side, because Julio does have that bit of a more niche picking when it comes to at least the Lunala. I think he does, yes. So for the Lunadon players out there, he is, his team is a little bit more unique, because we usually see maybe like a Charizard over, like say, the Porygon 2 slot there. So that's his kind of individual piece or a little bit of flavor that he's really putting into this. Probably that foul play, recover, trick room stuff. I don't know if he's got like eerie impulse or not, but it's it could be still a strong option into Maurice's team here. 
uh, on that Kyogre and that Zapdos, both of which are special attacking Dynamax targets. However, we see the leads now. Julia leads for the Incineroar and the Venusaur, and Maurice with his Zapdos and the Grimmsnarl. So Maurice might be thinking a little bit about whether he wants to go straight for the Dynamax or not. I mean, he's got a threat of fake out there, so you may want to get around that. But of course, Julia also has the option of switching in that ground on that sets that sun up. However, the speed interactions between the Grimmsnarl and the Incineroar could bring something in there. Incineroar, you, you want to run a little bit of speed investment on it. So if Incineroar switches out to Groudon, but Maurice switches his Grimmsnarl out to Kyoka, say, Maurice is going to get that Kyoka rain going first. So that might not be a play he may want to go for. So he goes for the safe fake out into the Zapdos. Fake out into the Zapdos, and my lord, as if we haven't already seen this enough. We see the static um, activate there, does uh, paralyze the Incineral as it is a physical contact move. Whilst we are going to be seeing the light screen uh, be set up from that Grimmsnarl, and Grimmsnarl being quite um, uh, flexible there, avoiding that sleep powder. <laughs> yes. Very flexible indeed, yeah. Sea Powder is 75% accurate, but we've seen Giolo in many times before, especially last week as well, where he's been able to throw out multiple Sleep Powders, and that's just one time he's been able to throw it out. Next time, that might be able to hit as well. And he's able to preserve his Dynamax to safely from the Zapdos, switch it out in favor of this Groudon. Yeah, as the Groudon is actually going to be uh, on the field right now. So being able to bring that sun as well is quite good, especially with the fact that there's a Thunder Wave potential coming in and the immunity. Oh, my Lord, what a switch in indeed. There's a lot of things going there, so we need to be able to break them down, process it. Thunder Wave does not work due to the ground typing and the Hurricane has reduced accuracy due to sun being on the field. So really, really uh, nice switch in there of that Groudon as we're going to be seeing the parting shot did target down that Zapdos, bring it down to minus one of its special attack whilst being able to allow Julia to pivot straight into his Lunala. Lovely bit of pivoting, as you said, Costa. And particularly in this matchup as well, where parting shot allows you to safely switch out and get in something, well, safely as well, because it's not could take most hits. It's not four times a week doing anything and it can get in something before something else hits. And that's especially key in the weather war here. Mm. Maurice hasn't revealed his Kyogre yet, which so um, it's not too pivotal at the moment, but Zapdos being in now, somewhat decreased offense, is maybe gonna want, either wanna switch out, switch out or maybe go for an eerie impulse into the Lunala. Yes, we're actually gonna see the Lunala switch out immediately after it was uh, essentially in introduced onto the field uh, for the Incineral, being able to get a further Intimidate onto that Grimmsnarl, at least in case it wants to try to go for any sort of physical moves. But no, it does not. And Julia anticipated a potential Thunder Wave coming out there and Eerie Impulse. My Lord, Julia is just uh, being that one step ahead right now of Maurice's play, being uh, well aware of what Maurice's options are as, wow, the Heavy Slam actually nearly picks up the KO, but it's quite shy on missing it with four hit points remaining. Yeah, Maurice is unfazed by that incoming heavy slam there. A completely unmoving because his Grimmsnarl lives that hit. And that's all you need because it's Prankster. He can get something else up now for next turn if it so wants to. But if Growlin's in, in a nice position, it's not being too threatened by what Maurice has here. I think uh, uh, Duolio is like in a good position because his ground, even though his Groudon's in here, it is Assault Vest, so it's not one of those Sword Stance sets that's, so it allow, that allows it to be able to set up, which would have been slightly more beneficial here. However, it does allow him to really go for a Precipice Blades or catch the Dynamax and knock out the Zapdos here with a Rock move. So it, the, the ball in is his court here, how he uses the momentum he currently has. Oh, as we're going to be seeing the fake out, uh, not mattering, I'd say it is a bit actually. Um, uh, with regards to the chip damage dealt onto um, the Kyoga slot there, which may reduce uh, ever so slightly the water spout move there, as we're going to be seeing a Stone Edge connect and pick up the KO on that Sapto. So it's not looking good when it comes to resource availab availability over on Maurice's side, although they do have the rain on field. And naturally speaking, you would expect the Kyoga to be outspeeding most crowd on and this Incineroar, especially after Paralysis. Yeah, especially when you wanted to click that Water Spout button. Being faster than your opponent is particularly key for that reason. And Pyoga is in the rain versus two Pokemon that really don't want to be taking these hits. So now Julia is definitely on the back foot because Maurice is pretty much unchecked now. However, Julio is 
uh, does have his assault vest on the ground on. So if he so wants to, he could maybe Dynamax, see how much bulk he's got on there, start getting out some Max Quakes and potentially live the water moves that Maurice is going for. And if that's a Max Quake into the uh, Undynamax un Kyogre, that's a huge amount of damage that then, say, a, a Venusaur can then come in and clean up for. Because Maurice doesn't have a lot of speed control on his end at the moment. But for the Groudon is not going to do that this time. It's going to switch out into Lana, which still has its Shadow Shield up. Yeah, still having the Shadow Shield is so, so good, especially for switching situations, as we're going to be seeing the Zacian over on Maurice's side go for the Behemoth Blade into that slot. So thanks to the Shadow Shield, it's not going to be taking as much damage, and my lord, that really would have been. But the important thing is, this allows the uh, Lunal to get picked up as well as the Incineroar from that Water Spout. So uh, essentially, the Zacian in the form of enabling its partner restricted Pokemon there in being able to successfully pick up the KO, but this may be leaning into a potential strategy from Julio wanting to bring ultimate sun mode on the field with that Groudon and Venusaur. But then you have to think this battle of the weather wars, right? Uh, Maurice surely should be switching his Kyogre out in order to allow for the subsequent turn for Rain to be able to return. Yeah, I think that's quite likely, Costa. I, I just want to go back like a couple of turns to when like uh, Julio went for that fake out into Grimmsnarl, uh, potentially to prevent like an extra like th like Thunder Wave or extra screen. But and Maurice expertly noticing that moment was a really good opportunity for him to get his in, his Kyogre safely. And Julio didn't even like go for Precipice Blades either. It came in just completely unchecked. So yes, Zapdos went down, but it had already had reduced offenses. It wasn't doing a, a lot. And Julia had, uh, and it just allowed Maurice to get that really nice position and get that double knockout. So now Julia being down to his last two, he's got nothing else that can set his son up unless he chooses to Dynamax the Groudon and start going for more Max Flares that would be in the rain, not doing a whole lot of damage. So even though he's got the weather now, Maurice is still in a decent position to be able to turn things around. Oh, but Maurice is actually going to go on the offensive by Dynamaxing their Kyogre. And this may be a risky turn indeed. You may be subject to a Sleep Powder coming out from this um, Venus, or if Julio opts to go for, let's say, the Groudon Dynamax in order to either A, get Max Quake set up, or B, try to re reinforce the Max Flare uh, sun, sunny weather conditions as Zacian's going to be going for the Protect there. Definitely does not want to be subject to anything. The Sleep Powder oh. flows into yeah. the Zacian <laughs> Protect. So this is not what you want to see if you are Julio, seeing that the Kyogre was uh, willing to sit there and either be subject to a G-Max Vine Lash or a Sleep Powder as we're going to be seeing the Max Geyser come out. It goes into the Venusaur slot in case there is a Focus Sash available there. It wants to break it and set up its reign, even if it imparts a critical hit onto the Venusaur doing so. And what's quite interesting there is that we actually saw the Groudon outspeed the Kyogre there, which is not something we often see. It's usually the Kyogre outspeeding, as you said before, Costa. So, like, now even though the rain is up, Groudon is still able to get another shot off here, because it's likely going to still hit, uh, take a hit from the Zacian. However, Venusaur, um, potentially being that Focus Sash variant, is also pretty fast too, so should also outspeed the Kyogre. So, Julio has another opportunity potentially to go for another Sleep Powder if it's not targeted by Maurice's session. Yeah, and I think that is a, a very good observation as well to make because in this scenario, um, if your Julio is a bit rough with regards to maybe not better utilizing the Dynamax, or perhaps a tiny bit better, or even within that turn as well, because Vine Lash could be so, so crucial, but you are subject to essentially getting a double uh KO'd by a double up from the Kyogre as well as that Zacian because there is no longer the sun on the field and you need to try to make sure that you're focusing and getting rid of any sort of win conditions if you're Maurice over on Julio's side as we're gonna be seeing the Max Guard come out from the video. Yeah Max Guard is really interesting potentially preventing from the Behemoth Blade that goes into that Max Guard so an excellent play by Julio there. Max Guard is still coming out however into this Groudon which is gonna be rain boosted and through what is probably an assault vest does get the knockout. So yeah. this looks looking like uh, GG at the moment, at least for this game one, uh, because that's actually still putting the same offensive pressure yep. into the second turn, thanks to that behemoth blade. Well, exactly that. And I think uh, it was just, uh, I think Julio's uh, win condition there was based off of the targeting or inaccuracy of targeting from Maurice's side. Uh, if for whatever reason, Maurice wanted to focus down, onto that Venusaur, it would have uh, essentially been nullified due to that max guard, right? So, 
if you're Maurice, you have no reason not to go for the Groudon with the Max Geyser. You've, you've seen the speed interactions. You want to make sure that you get those win conditions going. And um, that's exactly what Maurice was able to do. And I uh, was able to give him that momentum going into game two, having that game one win. So how are we feeling with regards to Julio's adaptations? Um, do you think maybe Dynamax could have gone up a bit earlier? Uh, yes, I think so. I think what was really pivotal, I think I said earlier, was how Maurice got in his Kyoko so safely in front of the, the Groudon already, So, which forced Julio to switch out his Groudon to, and then to a Lunala, which then just took the double up and just got double KO'd. So I could still see Julio going for the same game plan, but just trying to make sure he's a little bit more careful about what he allows Maurice to position. So maybe using that parting shot that we still talked about much earlier yep. to be able to do that rather than clicking fake outs here and there because parting shot you know you're going to get off at some point without unless you've been throat chopped whereas a fake out it's gonna it's not very useful if someone switched it's not very useful if someone dynamaxed is so that's still gonna be a really important piece for him but i think he just needs to use it slightly differently is there any room for the floating duck to come onto the field pour it onto do you think there's any sort of um world where trick room being set up could be viable over on Julio's side and try to uh, bring that natural bolt from Porygon 2's side. Unless, of course, I think the Lunala may even have access to the Trick Room as well if he does want to try to go on a more um, controlled state sort of scenario, at least with regards to the speed tearing. Yeah, I, I think pretty sure the Lunala does have Trick Room as well. However, I think because Julio has uh, Groudon is faster than Kyogre, I think that's probably enough of a difference that you don't want to set up Trick Room. Um, because your Venusaur then and your Groudon are naturally outspeeding Kyogre, which is this obviously this amazing rainwater whale that just like unleashes he sheer damage around. But if as soon as you're outspeeding it, say you get a max Quake boost before a Kyogre moves, that is suddenly so huge rather than letting the Kyogre attack first and then you max Quaking. So um, I feel like Trick Room is slightly less of an option be just because of that speed interaction. Yeah, and I guess that would make sense because nothing is too clear, is it, with regards to um, uh, what the better option is to go for in that scenario. Because speed ties or any sort of uh, the situations of knowing um, which Pokemon might be faster or slower does always throw up plans. And I think we saw a similar situation with Maurice's Kyogre um, in the, yesterday's stream as well with regards to the training of the speed of the Kyogre, which is able to um, take advantage of opposing uh, opponents' um, trick rooms too so being able to see the leads of the uh, Grimmsnarl Zapdos over on Maurice's side and a bit more of a passive uh, well I'd say the exact same lead over on Julia's side um, is going to get static no it's not going to get static this time and will the sleep powder connect in game two yep Zapdos flinches Venusaur uses sleep powder and it connects so yeah pretty similar like turn to game one Except, obviously, if you're going for Sleep Powder, chances are it's going to hit more often than it's not. So um, it makes sense for Giulio to go for the exact same play because chances are he's actually going to hit this time. So now that that Grimsoul is falling asleep, it's not able to go for um, its shenanigans, like getting up and, say, a Reflect now. It's only the light screen up, so Groudon is looking pretty good as the Dynamax option to be able to dish out a lot of damage. Incineroar is here now, potentially going... For, would want to go for the Parting Shot, into the Zapdos, lower that offense again, and then maybe bring in something like the Lunala to be able to go set up Trick Room if Maurice decides to go on the offensive with like an airstream. Yeah, similar to Game 1, and why wouldn't you go for that? Because you're able to better position your board state by allowing no damage being dealt onto the Pokemon that you're intending to bring in onto the field. So uh, we are going to actually be seeing Maurice switch the Kyogre in a bit more earlier in comparison to Game 2, uh, if not actually the same turn, as we're going to be seeing the Hurricane come out from that Zapdos into the Groudon slot. No confusion being picked up there. And like you mentioned, David, we are going to be seeing the Piling Shot once again into the Zapdos uh, slot, which will be bringing its special attack down and logically, it makes a lot of sense to either, to be fair, you could bring either Lunala or Venusaur. It just sort of depends on what you're wanting to establish right now. I think it does. I like the Lunala switching as well, because you offer the offense of the Meteor Beam into the Zapdos. Your Shadow Shield is still up at the start of this turn, so you can take probably any like combination of attacks at the moment. Uh, maybe bar like a Max Geyser from Kyogre. But in that state, then you're leaving Groudon unchecked and with potentially a Venusaur for a free switch in and now your Groudon's in the back you could bring it in later to set up that Sun but now we do see on Maurice's end the Dynamax 
Yeah, the Dynamax actually uh, going to be coming out from this uh, Kyogre, so not opting to go for Zapdos here, maybe to try to pick up any sort of uh, Max Airstream boost or anything like that. You just want to wager in the fact that you definitely want to try to win any sort of weather war. I'd be quite interested to see if there's any sort of Max Hailstorm focus, actually, going into that Venusaur slot, as we're going to be seeing the Lunala go for the Wide Guard, anticipating a potential Water Spout, or Origin Pulse, Hurricane focuses down on the Groudon slot. Wow! Brings the Venusaur down to 15 hit points whilst confusing it. And we are going to be seeing the Kyogre not opting to go for Max Hailstorm just yet. It goes for the Max Geyser, but it definitely focuses down on that slot. Uh, you, we saw that essentially Maurice had that slot pinned. Uh, you, you're forced to either switch out the Groudon, you want to try to preserve and bring the Sun back in at a later turn, uh, or you have to try to accept the Venusaur drawing down or sack it for an Incineroar. Indeed, and you know it's a safe slot because that Growlon slot is probably that assault vest. And so no protect can come out, no max guard. It's a really safe option to just get as much damage as you like into there. So Julio now doesn't have the sun up this time, and he may have some slight speed on his side if the Growlon is able to outspeed the Kyogre once again here. But it's, it's definitely a, a big piece down in that Venusaur because there's no much more G-Max Light Vanilla, just no more Sleep Powder, and it was something that he knew could outspeed the Zashian once it's in the sun. Do a lot of damage to the Kyogre, he does not have that anymore. So it'd be interesting to see how Giulio uses his last two pieces here to do the damage, because you could maybe Dynax Lunala and start dishing out damage, but mm -hmm. Kyogre's special defense is so big, like you're just gonna lose that 1v1. Sure. So I think it's it, this is a really pivotal turn for Giulio, and we, as we do see the Dynamax. Yeah, and I would have really liked somehow if uh, uh, Ju Giulio was able to so sort of preserve the Venusaur for a max option, because I do think it would be quite nice to set up that Vine Lash, but understandably, there is a Zapdos on the other side that you got to consider as well, and we are going to be seeing the Groudon opt instead to go for the Dynamax right now, so I'm quite interested to actually see what um, move is going to be locking into, as we are going to be observing the Eerie Impulse from the Zapdos, targeting the Lunala, being able to bring it down to minus two of its special attack, and the Groudon is moving before the Kyoda goes for the Max Rockfall into that Zapdos slot. Does pick up the KO, does change the weather to sand. And I think that may be at least proof right now of a speed tie between the Groudon and Kyoda. I believe you saw the Groudon move first in game one as well, uh, as it went for the Precipice Blades before our Max Geyser came out. But uh, it maybe if it, we saw some another interaction earlier on too. Um, but I, I'm curious as to why uh, Julio actually goes for the rock pull there, because as we see, it changes the weather from the sun, and now that Max Geyser does double damage this turn wow. into Groudon, whereas, say, a Max Quake into the Kyogre that turn would have get, made, left Groudon in much more health at the end of this turn, plus a minus one special attack, because Zapdos isn't doing a whole lot on the field right there, especially in the sun, it can't really hit its hurricanes, yes, it can real impulse Lunala, but it's not doing a whole lot, so I think I would have preferred to see a Max Quake there, but he does, he is able to get a KO this turn, and maybe he's able to get a Max Quake up this turn and, and to see what he can do, or maybe he wants to go for the Max Flare to change the weather, but again, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage here, so Maurice is definitely still in the driver's seat with a very powerful Kyogre in his hands really really is and i think in this scenario it's quite tough having groudon on such low hp there as we actually are going to be seeing the max steel spy coming out from the groudon first goes into that uh, grim snarl picks up the ko will be boosting its defense right there as well as incineroars but that's not exactly optimal when versing a kyoda especially in its match form as uh, we are going to be getting that match guys are coming out second in trick room into the groudon slot does pick up the KO, and my lord, what of a turn of events, and I think, uh, I'm not sure, I think this Kyogre is really pulling its weight. It definitely is, as we've seen, it take down that Groudon, so the age-old Groudon versus Kyogre, no Rayquaz to kind of settle this debate yet, <laughs> but so, Maurice is once again in the upper hand here, having just KO'd Julio's Dynamax target. Zashin comes in here now for the first time in this game at full health. Uh, this is the first turn for like Incineroar, I think, I believe as well. So it does have the fake out turn here. It can go for something. There's no more Dynamax on either end. There is the last two Pokemon down on either side, but as we can see, Boris does have the rain up, which is really key for him here. It really is, and I think Julio does have access to Wide Guard, right? We've seen it before. Um, so that is something to note if Maurice wants to try to opt to go for a water type move if they do not have access to a single target water type move such as let's say Scold or Hydro Pump 
Um, so in this scenario, Trick Room is set up. Lunala does not have its special attack drop, so it can go for the Meteor Beam. But I wanted to see which Pokemon's going to focus where, as we're going to be seeing the Incineroar fake out that Kyogre. It will not be moving this turn. Um, makes a lot of sense because you do not want it to get any sort of water that move to either A, KO the uh, Incineroar, or B, break the Shadow Shield on the Lunala. Lunala, though, is going to be powering itself up with the Power Herb. Meteor Beam uh, interaction goes into the Kyogre. <laughs> <laughs> deals very minimal damage, David, there. And the Sacred Sword definitely does not. It brings that Incineral down to 30 hit points. It does, yeah. That's um, a fair amount of damage from the Sacred Sword. Uh, I I think I, like, misspoke the air cost, so I think a few times because I didn't realize the trick comes up. So oh, yeah. I, think, I think you're right. I think the, uh, the potentially was um, some sort of speed tie going on between the Kyogres and the Groudons there, um, now that the, this trick room is up. So, um, Kyogre is able to flinch first before the Lunala, we noticed there. So the Kyogre's actually underspeeding Lunala here. But as you said, the Y guard is pretty present now, because I think almost all Kyogres we've seen are running just, just only spread moves on their Kyogres for water moves. So Flairbits is doing a decent chunk of action, but it might need a burn to be able to like bring something back here. And it still does hang on. Oh. Water Spout comes out, though, no Y guard whatsoever. And Incineroar absolutely gets destroyed. Lunala broken the Shadow Shield is at a decent amount of health, but it's got a lot of work to do now. Moon Guys Beam, however, does come out, plus one special attack. Is this is into the Zacian? This could well be a KO. Let's see where it's targeting. Yes, it is. And Zacian does actually hang on, and we can see because of that HP stat, there's definitely a little bit of bulk on Maurice's Zacian. This is probably very key, but Hema Blade into the Lunala. Is it enough to pick up all that? Maurice takes the game. 2-0, and oh, and is our second finalist going to Bremen Regionals. Wow, and what a way to do it. I, I feel like it was quite tough because you had this Kyogre just doing all sorts, to be honest. And I think Maurice recognized that. You can see how excited he is. He is your second finalist. So huge congratulations to Maurice. Uh, of course, commiserations to Giulio 